question says three point charges are located on a circular arc as shown in the figure below. Let the radius equal 3.76 centimeters. Let to the right be in the positive x direction and up along the screen be the positive y direction. What is the total electric field at P, the center of the arc? And B, find the electric force that would be exerted on a negative 4.8 nanocoulomb point charge placed at P. So again if you don't understand the the vector notation that's being used here I put a link right above this video on uh, on my blog and I'm gonna put it down into the uh, the comments down below on uh, YouTube but the vector notation is pretty simple and I put together a little two-minute video on it so if you don't understand it go check it out okay Essentially what it's wanting us to do is find out the magnitude in the x direction. So let me make an x here. And the magnitude in the y direction on both of these. So x and y. We're going to start by finding our electric field. And we'll do that by, by looking at uh, P. And we're just going to, we're not going to figure what charge P is. We just want to know what field P is experiencing. And so, um, if we were, the field lines are always based on what a positive charge would do. So, if a positive charge was placed, uh, positive charge was placed right here, what would that do? Well, it would it would be pushed away by this one. It would be pushed away by this one and be pulled to, uh, toward the the uh, the arc by the negative charge. And so, my my uh, my lines here are going to be here, here. And, and actually in here. And I'll just go ahead and redraw that really quick because I don't want the scribbles in the way. So let's call this uh, this E X one. This is going to be E in the uh, X. Or well, let's call this E one. And we'll call this E two. We'll call this E three. And so this is going to be our x direction and our y direction for E1. So this is EX1 and this is EY1. Again, this is going to be our x for E2 and our y for E2. So this is EX2 and EY2. And then we only have an x, uh, an x direction for E3, so this is going to be EX3. So the, the electric field in the x direction is going to be equal to EX1 plus EX2 plus EX3. In order to figure out what EX is, we have to solve what E is. So what's the field? What is the, what is the electric field of this 3, newton, uh, nano, three nanocoulomb charge at 3.76 centimeters away? Well, you remember E, E is equal to uh, K times Q divided by R squared. Now, K is 8.99 times 10 to the positive ninth. Q is, is 3 times 10 to the negative ninth. So the 10 to the positive ninth, 10 to the negative ninth end up uh, just canceling each other out. And uh, you, so you have 8.99 times 3 for your numerator and then the denominator is so our radius is 3.76 centimeters but we need to put it in in meters in order for the units in K to cancel out correctly so the uh, the radius is 0 0.0376 meters and don't forget to square that that quantity so when you square it, your denominator should be 0 0.00141376. Now the numerator is going to change for each of these of, of these charges. Well, it's going to be the exact same for this one and this one. So on on uh, the x e for for this point charge is going to be the exact same as e for this point charge. So once you figure that out, the, but the numerator is going to change for this. The radius is the same, so the denominator is going to stay the same. You plug in your numbers, you should get e1. You, e1 is equal to uh, 19,000 
19,076.79. And so that's the, the electric field going in this direction. E2 is also equal to 19,076.79. And then E3, which is the negative charge pulling backward, is going to be equal to negative 12,717.9. So all I got to do is find the x and y component of each of those things. So e so if we look at our our field that we're talking about right here and e1 we said was this point, the e in the x direction is right here. This was uh this angle is 30 degrees. And so we can say we want to find the x direction. It's the adjacent. So adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. Remember uh so ka Toa, so opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. So adjacent is what we're trying to find. So we got to find uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So sine, or actually cosine, cosine 30 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is 19,076.79. So to find so to find A, which is, A is EX1, so E1 to EX1, so we take 19,076.79 cosine of 30 degrees, or if you're doing radians, it's 0 0.5235987878 radians. And I say radians because it can actually help you with the, the, the final step of looking at the Y direction. So this is equal to, the EX1 is equal to 16,520.98. And then you're going to find that the EX2 is the exact same value, so 16,520.98. And then EX3, it, it only has an X component, so you don't have to multiply it by anything. You just have to figure out what E3 is, and that gives you the EX3. E3 is a negative... 12717.9. When you add all of those together, the EX is equal to 20,324.11 newtons per coulomb. So this is actually the number you put into the first blank. It is the magnitude of the electric field at point P. And it's the magnitude in the x direction, which is uh, what i hat represents. For the y direction, the electric field, we're going to take a quick shortcut. Because you, you saw that the electric field is actually in the, the exact same magnitude. But in the y direction, it's the exact opposite in the y direction. So these two cancel each other out. And e, at e y is equal to zero because this backward force from the the negative charge has has no y component so its y component is zero and then this y component let's say it's five this one would be negative five uh, if it's ten this one would be negative ten and whenever I was saying earlier radians if you're using radians and you use a, a pro software like Excel it will actually you plug in um, uh, 0 0.52 right here, and then this one would actually be um, 300. And, so starting from this point, this would actually be 330 degrees, which would be 5.759 radians. You plug that in, it's actually going to give you a negative value equal to the positive value of of E1. So the shortcut method is just to look at it and analyze it, and the answer for for the second blank is zero, a big fat zero. And that's the part that has the J hat, which means the, the, the Y vector. The final component of this was to find the force in the X direction, the force in the Y direction. And so in order to find the force Fx, we just simply take the charge, the, the test charge, times Ex. And to find the force in the Y direction, we take the test charge times Ey. And we figured out that EX is equal to 20,324.11. Uh, 20, EY is equal to zero. So the force in the Y direction is going to equal zero. Uh, the charge, the test charge it said, was negative. So it's negative 
four uh, negative four point eight nanocoulombs, so times ten to the negative ninth coulombs. So we're going to plug in in our point charge there, and we're going to multiply it by 20,324. You should get that the force in the x direction, or or the i hat, is uh, is equal to negative 9.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then f of y, the vector f of y, you'll get zero because there is no electric field in the y direction. In summary, this is something that follows what's called the superposition principle, uh, which is basically the principle of vector addition. So if I have a vector that goes from here to here, and then I have another force vector that is in, in uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's do from here to here. Then the superposition principle says I can take the, the beginning of this point and place it at the tip of this point and draw it out. And then where it ends up, that will allow me to draw my resultant true vector. That would be the true vector. And so that's all we're doing is using the superposition principle to find the, the force and the electric field experienced at a particular spot when multiple charges are present.